The truth sometimes lies. At this point, leaks for Call of Duty have become marketing in and of itself. People say the next Black Ops game was built in four years of dev time. That's the most we've ever gotten. Or that Gobblegums are returning, so this game is going to be as good as Black Ops 3 was. But what gameplay or confirmation have you seen that proves any of this? And also, leakers seem to be the first ones aware of upcoming events, gameplay mechanics, behind the scenes information, and teasers before they come out. As a result, a lot of players flock to their accounts, and those accounts build hype. They provide mostly credible leaks, 99 to 100% come true. <laughs> and so, they are the best way to stay informed and build expectations for the next Call of Duty. Their influence is something to be monitored. They're essentially marketing geniuses that can and are filters for what gets into the public eye. But in today's video, I found something rather strange. By looking between the lines and taking a step back, I found something that no one else seems to be talking about, and most likely due to all the hype being built up, distracting everyone from what's really going on here. Now that your mind is wandering a bit, let me ask you a few Call of Duty related questions to pull you back in so that you can come to the same conclusion that I have. People always used to say, take leaks with a grain of salt, right? Meaning leaks are not 100% confirmation. Lots of stuff can change behind the scenes within a few months even. I was told recently by Bob Network UK in response to what MW2's Year 2 content would look like, he said Modern Warfare 2 Year 2 would have no zombies whatsoever, the same mess of an MW3 campaign, and less multiplayer content than what MW3 is giving us now. Instead, MW2's Year 2 multiplayer would slowly release all of the 16 launch maps and launch content throughout the whole year. All that for 70 US dollars. So essentially, no Modern Warfare 3 multiplayer DLC maps like Grease, Grime, or Departures. No Modern Warfare Zombies. No Get High. No more 2v2 maps, I assume. To me, this seems like an early concept proposal. It wasn't something set in stone as proven by MW3's existence, sweetening the deal per se. What Bob the leaker told me is something that would quickly get turned down and workshopped because who in their right mind wants to buy an overpriced premium season pass that only gives us recycled maps and a shitty short campaign that's only purpose is to inflate the game's price from 50 to 70 dollars USD. If year two of Modern Warfare 20 22 was like the same price as Zombies Chronicles in BO3, I think I'd be down. But if this package Bob described would have been the year 2 of MW2 110%, I'd be offered a full priced Call of Duty game that's missing a third mode, missing a new multiplayer experience with a rushed unfinished campaign that spits in the face of anyone that cared about the series beforehand. What do you think the boardroom at Activision headquarters would have said about series? Seriously putting that on the market. They wouldn't. Sweetening the deal was inevitable from the start. In reality, they just happened to choose turning it into a separated game probably a year before it actually dropped. There is a lot of time that could have been put into making updates for Modern Warfare 2's DMZ, multiplayer, giving us events and whatnot, slowly dropping new DLC guns that are balanced off the bat instead of what MW3 did at launch, making Almazra Zombies its own permanent game mode for year two, along with Onslaught as that zombified embassy map for Halloween had zombies pathing perfectly built into the game. Heck, Onslaught should exist in MW3 by now and for some reason it hasn't. It still isn't here and I have a suspicion that they're gonna advertise it in Black Ops 6 for next year. They also could have given us the complete raids collection planned from the beginning instead of being told, uh, sorry guys, you can't do your two or three final raids anymore. Wrap it all up in just one. No one cares about Hadir from Modern Warfare 2019, and they sure as hell won't when they see what we got cooking up in MTV3's campaign with Soap himself. <laughs> you can almost say they dropped the soap. 
Oh, poor, poor Infinity Ward had their raids mode rushed last minute. The deception here is real. Activision just wanted $70 and they were willing to get it at the expense of hurting MW2 and separating MW2 players from the MW3 players. Like, hopefully you guys realize that an MW2 year two doesn't split the player base as much as a totally new game like MW3 does. And by the way, this will all make sense in just a minute. I'll explain why this matters in relation to Black Ops 6 very soon, bear with me. So they didn't even need to make a campaign for MW2 year two, I don't know how this thing got made. It's way lower quality than MW2's campaign, which was kinda already lower quality than Mario for 2019's. And the story's pacing and continuity were all over the place. Price inhales the most deadly gas in the MW universe one second, he wakes up literally in the next scene and is just fine throughout the rest of the campaign. No cause and effect, no stakes, no consequences. And looking further into MW3's campaign marketing before the game came out, in retrospect, I'm convinced the only reason Makarov was in it was to get people to buy into the hype, to just forget about the rushed dev time. Like guys, remove the iconic Makarov from this campaign, swap him with Ivan, and you're essentially Task Force 1 for 1, getting shit on by this new random villain that the game acts like Task Force 1 for 1 already knew about. We didn't see Makarov in Marvel for 2019 nor MW 2022. His actions never influence the story behind the scenes. There's no foreshadowing or narrative reason for him to exist as such a menacing, calculated villain that MW3 specifically makes him out to be. He's not that. Makarov is just Makarov. The fourth wall break, players knowing who he was in a pre-rebooted series, is what made him intriguing for MW3's marketing. Do you guys remember this plane scene in the MW3 marketing? Remember No Russian? We all thought 9, skip 10, 11 was gonna be in the MW3 campaign. Well, <laughs> whoop de doo What do we have here for Black Ops 6 one year later? Not 9, skip 10, uh, 11 might be be in the Black Ops 6 campaign. Guys, Call of Duty is back and it's breaking boundaries once again. We went through the exact same hype phase last year with the exact same tragic IRL event. And the same year before MW3, we talked about No Russian being in the MW 2022 campaign since it was in the original Marvel for 2 campaign. Since No Russian was in the original, what would the rebooted No Russian look like? So many possibilities with airplanes, right? That's what we were speculating at the time. So people have been getting hyped by the exact same airport terrorist attack for three back-to-back -back years now. How does no one see this? Or maybe the relevant question is, where have the people gone that used to care? I'm convinced that no one likes the MW franchise anymore. The only stuff people seem to care about is nostalgia bait that they constantly fall for, and also this stuff for the cod whales that looks nothing like Call of Duty. If the truth lies, Black Operations conspiracy stuff looks cool to you, why wouldn't you want the multiplayer to also look and feel this cool? I personally expressed this turning a blind eye concern I saw from the COD community, but people got very defensive about it. I said, false advertising as usual. It sucks to see because everyone loves it, but when the game comes out, it looks nothing like it and people turn a blind eye. So others told me, it's for the campaign, not for skins. You've always got the most dork ass takes. COD has never been a milsim and never will be. Get over it and go play a game you're good at if there is any. And shut up, n-word. Go make an hour long video talking nonsense the entire time. No one's turning a blind eye to anything, we just don't care. <sighs> like, again, the COD community can be so blind eyed and toxic at times. Like, let's look at the post that we retweeted here. A dark new chapter for the Black Ops franchise begins. Call of Duty hashtag Black Ops 6. Not addressing the campaign specifically, it's addressing Black Ops 6 as a whole. Under that we have, let's go! This is starting to feel like home! The best COD ever! Let's go! Again from Xbox. Yo, this game's gonna be lit. Love your hard work you guys put into the game, hashtag Black Ops 6. A game that we haven't seen a speck of gameplay yet, guys. At least there hasn't been any gameplay yet. There's gonna be some revealed on June 9th, apparently. But these tweets, they're, they're 
They're from a while ago. <laughs> no gameplay yet. But yeah, no one's turning a blind eye. We just don't care. Clearly people thought this teaser was exciting. If you're excited by this, you are inherently turning a blind eye if you specifically do not care that the advertising is not representing the main mode people play Call of Duty 4. Multiplayer. Even with the last Black Ops game, Cold War, we had the Pawn Takes, takes pawn. pawn Reveal teaser, which was equivalent to the Truth Lies one we just got. It sets the tone while talking about all three main modes, Campaign, Multiplayer, and Zombies. What if nothing is quite what it seems? That everything you think you know is just a game. A game of wars and lies, cover-ups and disinformation. Secret operations that never took place. Travel into the Ural Mountains in search of answers. Playing the world's greatest chess match. Breaking into hidden bunkers across Verdansk, all to crack endless strings of numbers and launch deep into the middle of the Cold War. You stopped short of nothing. Hacking into old computers and retrieving classified transmissions. You traveled deep into the great underground, discovering secret rooms and hidden treasures. More missions, more cover-ups. Parachuted into a war-torn stadium to find hidden markers and defused bombs before they went kaboom and discovered secrets more horrific than one could ever imagine. If you're watching this, then you already know how twisted things can become. Unthinkable atrocities and the game of our humanity on full display. You journeyed across the globe to the streets and landmarks of Miami. You walked the twisting roads of Moscow, navigating through train stations, unveiling the network of Soviet operatives, lying in wait through the United States and Europe. You discovered a hidden military base, stretching a mile long, hidden deep within the bowels of the Soviet Union. And you even learned a little about me. My name is William Bowman. Joseph Bowman was my father. Discover the truth, join me, and unlock the rest of the story. That immersion was giving the game a gritty, bad-ass Black Ops sort of vibe. It's what the game looked like at launch and the following few months too. People are so hive-mindedly toxic now that when you mention COD having a shred of dignity, they immediately say, COD isn't a mill sim. What did this teaser have that made you think military simulator? This is Black Ops, not modern military warfare. This is why it's so stupid talking to these players. They don't think for themselves. It's a mindless brain rot parroting. That's the only way someone gets it's not a mill sim out of me saying false advertising because the game feels nothing like it in multiplayer. Like, huh? What? So the problem here doesn't just stop at the hype blinding players. We also have people so one dimensional that they can't have a real conversation around what is being discussed. These people go out of their way to defend false marketing to preserve their new silly skins everywhere era of COD. They don't actually say it. They won't admit that they just have a different subjective preference. Instead, they act like COD has never been immersive. They speak their opinion through an objectivity lens. Old fans that say it used to be immersive are lying. And I'll tell you what, in a few more years, that gaslighting argument will change into God has had eight silly looking games in a row now. Immersion has been gone for a long time. Adapt or leave this franchise. They won't admit that COD used to have immersion now, but give it some time and they will admit it when the games are set in stone to be silly every single year going forward. Like we talked about it in my last video, why is the COD community so toxic with the act man clip. The players at large are so toxic that they will straight up lie if it means they get the games they want. Once silly skins are the standard, the mask will come off and they'll say immersive CODs are a bygone era. Mark my words. If you want immersion in the multiplayer and in the zombies crews, speak up and be heard. And be respectful. If someone's toxic to you about it, they're cringe. If they point out, but silly skins make the money, tell them to stop being friends with corporations that don't care about them. Everyone already knows that they make money. No one's discussing that nor disagreeing with you. You don't need to be unhelpful for the sake of arguing. Instead, why not suggest a solution that benefits everyone? This is your monthly Matsuki PSA speaking. COD needs an immersion filter ASAP. It fixes the problems for everyone, not just multiplayer, but if you have one for zombies, you could always have a crew with you at will. It is such a golden 
an idea that I hope you also echo my solution to these COD developers. If you agree with me, I don't see a reason for combating it. But back to why and how Black Ops 6 might be misleading all of us yet again. The people that have the most influence over Call of Duty are these leakers that leak information and ideas early. Stuff that's designed to get people hyped up. Stuff that will be outdated later so if you're a content creator, you better cover it fast or else you'll be late to the party. You'll get less views and people will tell you, this is old news. We knew about this months ago. Why are you talking about it now? What I'm trying to say is that leakers have a rather frightening grasp over marketing and controlling narratives. Take Modern Warfare 2019's overhaul for example. The gaming revolution used to be the most credible leaker out there, but after the overhaul was addressed by the developers themselves to not be true, the gaming revolution wasn't happy and allegedly lost his inside source. It was a fake leak to rat out who was illegally sharing inside information. I remember TGR saying that the developers were lying, he obviously wasn't happy, but this essentially got a bunch of people hating on Modern Warfare 2019 that expected the gameplay overhaul that TGR said was real and coming soon. This hate spread to the developers and the community manager at Infinity Ward. People wanted them fired over a leak. You can obviously see why taking leaks with a grain of salt is so important now, right? It sucks too because developers should be taken seriously. We should be able to take their word when they come out to address these alleged overhauls coming soon. Now, when we got Modern Warfare 2022, it was also leaked that it would be getting two years of support. Call of Duty Modern Warfare 22 marks a major turning point for the franchise, the end of annual releases. This two-year commitment plan ensures the devs have more time to polish their games, and it allows Infinity Ward to take the gloves off. Will you take the gloves off? You can glove on your hands, Kyle. This is a major plus for this year's COD, as it seems Activision is doing the unthinkable and prioritizing a good video game over profits. Leaks spread, content creators echoed them with praise, but the developers stayed silent this entire time. Why? Well, once again, the deception is real. It was probably ordered by Activision to not talk about, to not let the community know that the game that they're buying is not what it really is, to just let players buy and MW2 for the expected MW2 maps in the MW2 reboot to get hyped for your two, <laughs> then be forced to buy the whole new separated DLC game last moment. Jingle jingle, want the OG MW2 map still? Buy our rushed, totally new game that we can just justify being $70 because we added DMZ zombies to it. It's the most played Modern Warfare 3rd mode in history after all, but we won't be supporting it throughout the year. And you know, the only reason we thought there was a year two was because of leakers. This just goes to show the power of marketing. And do you know how the upcoming 2024 Black Ops game is said to have a four year development cycle? Sounds great, right? Almost too good to be true. Treyarch and literally every single other studio working on COD has never had that chance. This is a golden opportunity for a new modern classic COD experience, right? Well, let's take a step back from all this hype. Hype can blind people and sometimes it makes you very narrow-minded. Let's get the bigger picture here. Remind me again, what are the next few Call of Duty games coming out on the horizon? We got a new Black Ops 6 game by Treyarch for the end of 2024 this year. All right, all right. Infinity Ward just got off of MW2 and are working on their next game in 2026. That's the regular three-year development cycle for Infinity Ward. That's obviously leaving a gap in 2025. So, what about Sledgehammer Games? They're still working on MW3 in 2023, and 2025 is just one year ahead. Apparently, they've been given the opportunity to do COD 2025, but through leaks. We know that Sledgehammer Games was said to have understandably declined that offer, which means that studio would most likely be making the COD after Infinity Wards in 2027. Congrats, honestly. Like, Sledgehammer Games also getting a three-year development cycle is awesome. Very deserved. However, recent leaks have suggested that COD 2024 is a Black Ops Gulf War style game, and that the next year, COD 2025, will be a Black Ops 2 sequel. With COD 2025 being a Black Ops 2 sequel, without the support of Sledgehammer Games and Infinity Ward, that leaves 
Treyarch. So, that four years of dev time for COD 2024 is looking kind of, uh, split down the middle, huh? And by the way, I just watched the new Black Ops 6 reveal. It's launching with 16 maps, kind of like MW3. However, four of those maps are just 2v2 style maps put into 6v6, like Shipment or Stash House. So they are already artificially inflating their game size with these tiny maps. And four maps out of 16 is literally a whole quarter. That's kind of rough. Now, my worries don't just stop here either. Yes, this means COD 2024 will also have, in fact, less than four years of dev time. Trick would essentially be making two CODs within that time frame. However, in my opinion, things are shaping up for a repeat of Modern Warfare 2 into Modern Warfare 3. You're probably wondering, what do you mean by that, Matsuki? Well, with Modern Warfare 2, a three-year dev time COD, that's a lot more time than Cold War and Vanguard, by the way. We had a pretty solid game planned for launch. Unfortunately, for unseeable reasons, the game launched with 10 maps instead of the planned 11. Museum was withheld. Why? Legal reasons, apparently. So 10 maps we got, but here's where things get a bit sussy. Modern Warfare 2 had a weird season one with only shipment and shoot house. No season zero map either. Modern Warfare 2019 had shoot house for its season zero map, Cold War had Nuketown, and Vanguard had DOS house, but nothing for MW2 season zero. Then we also have a bunch of Warzone maps that made their way over into MW2 through its DLC seasons. The whole point of bringing Warzone maps over is to allow the devs to work on more things at once. Since Raven and IW made the Almazra map, they could just double down POIs with multiplayer maps. It's working smarter, not harder, to essentially give us more content. But we didn't. Modern Warfare 2019 gave us 11 maps pretty much at launch, including Season Zero, but also 18 DLC maps afterwards for a total of 29 6v6 maps. Modern Warfare 2022 gave us 10 maps at launch, with only 16 DLC maps, which I should remind you two are from their last game, Modern Warfare 2019, a game built on the same engine as MTV 2022. So really, Shipment and Shoot House are even less effort. So Modern Warfare 2's maps total is 26, but 24 if you don't count the recycled shipment and shoot house. Then comes Modern Warfare 3 2023, a game that launched with 16 multiplayer maps. All are remakes, but all are built from the ground up on this new engine. Also so far, we are on season 4 out of 5 or maybe 6. Modern Warfare 3 still has some way to go. This is a game made in 16 months instead of the 3 year dev time Modern Warfare 2 got. So to recap, Modern Warfare 2019 has a total of 29, Modern Warfare 2's has a total of 26, and that's being generous, while Modern Warfare 20 2023 is currently at 33. Not only does Modern Warfare 3 have four more maps than Modern Warfare 2019 right now, but it also has another two seasons with more maps to come. If this isn't a genuine red flag, I don't know it is. The fact MW3 is doing much better than it should have with the deck of cards it was given goes to show that with a smaller dev time, they had to pull resources from elsewhere. Pulling map resources from MW2, Sledgehammer Games not making a third mode themselves, and not creating a very long campaign with a bunch of repurposed Warzone locations as OCMs is how they pulled it off in 16 months. I genuinely do not want to see this again for Black Ops 6 and 7. While BO6 is getting 12 66 size maps at launch, that is great news! But while it gets 12, we can already see that they're trying to inflate numbers with tiny maps, and we still don't know what the DLC content has to offer. We'll have to wait for the COD next event, I guess. But yeah, Modern Warfare 3 did not sell as well as Activision wanted, apparently it undersold by 30% which is huge, and that might be due to the content that was offered. Multiplayer was all 16 iconic MW2 maps at launch, so no brand new original maps. It was going against the MW2 year 2 leak. They revealed it with a bunch of wacky cosmetics that don't create a grounded identity for the game. If you were an OG MW2 player, this looks nothing like the OG MW2 that they're trying to advertise to you, especially with all the blue and red special effects filter cluttering the footage. I don't know why they did that, it just kind of makes things look like they're trying to hide the actual game. So what I think might happen is we could get half of BO2's maps this year, and then the other half in BO7. It depends if they actually want to keep an identity. Now, one YouTuber, his name is Chopper, he was able to get flown out to Treyarch Studios to get an exclusive behind-the-scenes look at Black Ops 6. And while he was there, Treyarch developers gave a presentation and allowed people to ask questions about their upcoming game and its identity. Let's roll the footage before we talk more about that. I don't know. It just seems like this is a Call of Duty game where they really get it. And I and I genuinely mean that. They opened the presentation by saying, hey, what is the identity of this game? Yeah. Literally, yeah. what I've been preaching forever is like, yeah. give us 
all to do with identity back. And you know, that was like priority number one. And I'm like, great. I did ask them how much they're going to maintain that identity throughout the year. And they're like, I think I know what you're asking. We know people like crazy stuff but we're going to try to keep this a black ops game the whole way through yeah it's basically like what i was told so still very hopeful and it was good news to me so we can see what they're trying to do but <laughs> look at the vault edition skins pre-order the vault edition and get the hunters versus hunted operator pack the mastercraft weapon collection the season one black cell bundle and more we know people like crazy stuff, but we're going to try to keep this a Black Ops game the whole way through, is basically like what I was told. This is going against their own words, so I don't know what to trust here. Does this mean that they will try and keep the maps all 1990s themed throughout the year? Does this mean that we won't see any BO2 maps set in 2025? Who knows? Looking at this from an optimistic standpoint, I'd love to see an immersion filter added. Maybe they'll reveal that after launch so that the people can buy their vault editions for the silly skins and then kind of reveal this filter once they have their money. I know that's a little scummy, but hey, being a realist here for a second, they did stuff like this back in MW2 around the tier skips. They changed how they worked after season one, so it is possible. This of course is speculation, but Treyarch are actually working on a detailed third mode this year, zombies. So it's not like they can do what MW3 did and only focus on multiplayer content. If they put two years into both BO6 and BO7, we might see things similar to the other two-year dev time COD Black Ops Cold War, where there's a heavy reliance on old remastered maps, where Zombies only gets a little bit of maps here and there throughout the year. Sure, we're getting two maps at launch for BO6, but since it's only a four-year dev time COD with two games, they'll cut half the Zombies content for year two. And of course, with two back-to-back -back CODs by the same studio, there might not be as much innovations. And like MW2, they might not be willing to change stuff like perk systems until their next game. A lot of people did not like MW2 and were okay with MW2. MW3 getting its content and updates, but the content and updates are not what I'm arguing against here. I am arguing against the principle of sabotaging and delaying updates for one Call of Duty so that the next Call of Duty can do better. Some people couldn't take off their biases against MW2 this year, and so I fear for those people as they will be in for a rude awakening with Black Ops 6 going into Black Ops 7, especially if they do enjoy Black Ops 6. Cutting content from a game you liked does not feel good. Trust me, bro. Things are also looking a bit sketchy when it comes to making zombies fully online. To be specific, round-based zombies, not 24-player-based zombies. <laughs> really, zombies should be perfectly playable offline like it always has with a pause button feature. But stuff like that is what Treyarch have been moving away from in these past three years. Which also reminds me, they made Vanguard zombies and Modern Warfare zombies during this development cycle for BO6 and 7. Now, I'm not saying that it's Treyarch's fault, but to me, this change seems to be made so that they can control whether you can play your own games in the future. I recommend giving Mr. Raffle Waffle's most recent video a watch on this subject after this video. I'll leave it linked in the description. So to conclude, I just want this video to be an early warning. Don't give in to the hype. Leakers can deceive you. Sometimes stuff changes behind the scenes out of nowhere. BO6 is in fact not made on a pure four-year development cycle like everyone is claiming it to be because BO7 has to be made somewhere in there too. And above all, do not pre-order. Yes, there will be bonus rewards, but that does not matter. You can't keep giving this franchise your money blindly as they have proven to be untrustworthy in recent years for quite a while now. Warzone 1 got fully shut down to force people into Warzone 2. Almazer Zombies doesn't exist anymore in MW2 because they wanted to sell MW3 Zombies. Modern Warfare 2 didn't get a perk system overhaul nor as much DLC maps because they wanted to sell a rushed COD like MW3. Please drop your biases, look at the bigger picture here. Like, even the carry forward system is being left behind for BO6. Even though all the CODs are on the Call of Duty hub and your skins could easily transfer over to BO6. We all know BO6 isn't going to look immersive at launch due to the Vault Edition skins with crazy visual effects. So essentially, this decision to not include the carry forward system is anti-consumer from all directions. If you liked MW3 silly skins, they could easily fit into Treyarch's next game. 
game, but you're being denied because cutting off the carry forward system means you need to buy new expensive silly skins and black cell bundles every new season. So before I end this video, I just want to say that there's been a lot of bad things going on with COD now. Stuff that we theoretically could mend by holding onto our money, speaking with our wallets. I will not be buying Black Ops 6 at full price. I'll try to buy it on Black Friday sales. I'd say even if you want it day one, just wait because Black Friday is before season one. And if you get it on sale, that's money you could be saving and potentially optionally spending on microtransactions, sorry, <laughs> macro transactions. If and only if you want to support the game further. And hopefully we don't start seeing 4,000 COD point bundles because oh god, that would be a horrible norm. The prices have been skyrocketing lately, so please save your money where you can. There's still a slight chance I might buy Black Ops 6 for launch, but hey, give me your thoughts and predictions in the comments below. Do you think I'm right about Black Ops 6 and Black Ops 7 and the sly marketing? Or will you continue to put blind faith into a franchise only concerned about money at this point? And Treyarch we trust, right? $80 hammers, $100 FOMO camos, and $30 Black Cell skins every single season. We're living in an insane time. Alright guys, that's enough out of me. Peace out homies, enjoy your night. Bye-bye.